All right, now you be a good boy, and um, we'll see you in a bit, okay? All right. Well, hello, ladies and gentlemen. Welcome back to Grizzly Bear Sims YouTube channel, and welcome back to Thornton Farm. Glad you come back here for episode number eight here on Thornton Farm, and we are in a brand new game day. We're in game day number three. Um, of course, uh, this is early summer, so we're playing things just a little bit different. You know, I started uh, the gameplay in in um, early summer, game day one of early summer. And so let me just kind of navigate this turn here. Been parking the gator over here just uh, to for ease of convenience and everything. And let me just uh, let me just kind of take you guys uh, right over here for just a moment and kind of show you. Uh, we basically got the hay, or I'm sorry, it wasn't hay. We got the grass belled over here in field number 15, which we cut in episode number seven. Uh, raked it, well, I cut it off camera, but raked it in episode number seven and belled it in episode number seven. Then we came along and wrapped that. And we have the bells there just fermenting in the field. Uh, no need in uh, wasting our farm space um, around the barnyard area to store those bells because we're going to basically be selling those as soon as they ferment. Uh, that is just a partial uh, business that Mr. Thornton has been offering to many of the local farmers and everything in the area um, just to kind of keep them uh, from having to make so much investment, so large investments and stuff like that and some of that equipment. And uh, it's a great service to the to the area here because again, uh, so many of these farms are really struggling. And speaking of struggling, uh, our greenhouses are struggling right now because uh, they are out of manure. Um, so we need to basically head up there and go ahead and top those off. Now I will um, just uh, do a few of them on camera and then probably do an edit um, and do the rest of them. But we did get our water well drilled up here, so I am just uh, so happy. I uh, got that done uh, just a few days ago. And uh, when I say a few days ago, I, I kind of want to step off um, um, uh, out of character here for just a moment and just kind of say to folks, you know, I, I may say this is game day number three of early summer or whatever. That's kind of just for uh, the counting as far as we're playing nine, nine game days per season and everything. But I kind of visualize um, that. That, you know, even even the the episodes are not necessarily, even though they may be in the same game day as far as Farm Sim 17 is concerned. Um, let's not necessarily think of them as being in the same uh, day as far as the time of day and day of week and all that kind of stuff, because it doesn't have to be that way. Uh, clearly, uh, as I've kind of talked about with the whole hay pro hay making process and everything. Um, you know, we may just kind of pretend like that, you know, a day or two uh, goes by while that grass is uh, drying out, turning into hay, etc. So i um, not going to necessarily get too hung up on that, but uh, in any event. So that's one of our greenhouses done, and I'll just go ahead and do, I need to lift my bucket up so we don't pour manure everywhere. Uh, looks like some of our greenhouses do have manure and others do not. That is a bit odd. Uh, I would figure that they would all pretty much, uh, I would figure that they would all pretty much utilize about the same amount of manure per greenhouse. Um, but we will just have to kind of see if that is maybe not the case or maybe uh, maybe some of these others ran out of water. I'm not sure. Oh, this one looks like it's got 21%. Uh, or, or that's the cows that have 21% water. Okay. Well, anyway, uh, it doesn't hurt to go ahead and do this. And like I said, I'm going to do some of this on camera. And then uh, I will do an edit. That way we can kind of do a few different things per episode. And so uh, Thomas did come to me this morning. And he did confirm that Billy Bob was going to be coming over. Uh, so I am quite excited about that, actually, because... Um, uh, again, from what I understand, Billy Bob is uh, working for a U.S. farm, and um, so I'm hoping that he can kind of come over here and and really help us kind of understand uh, some maybe some different ways of of doing things and um, that kind of stuff. And so, uh, in addition, I've been talking to Mr. Thornton about um, some additional capital investments here on the farm. 
uh, perhaps in the form of uh, additional equipment. You know, it really took us a long time to get the uh, to get the bells done um, uh, the last couple of days. Get those. Um, oops, let me let me back up just a smidge to get those bells done. And um, um, you know that bell wrapper that we have that is such a slow process. And so he basically wants me to do a little research. I'm going to go up and talk to the uh, to the store, to the guys up at the at the store, and see what they might have. See if they have something uh, that they may have heard of, some newfangled uh, contraption piece of equipment or something like that. Uh, you know, we hear a lot about um, the big Corona, big M. Um, mowers and stuff like that and it's really not the mowing piece of it that is really slow for us it is truly it's the wrapping uh, the bailing and the wrapping and of course uh, we're not necessarily using so much of that for our own use uh, as much as we are basically providing that service uh, to our um, local uh, farmers and of course we could provide that to them in bulk um, coming right out of our silage uh, silo but they don't really have any way of storing it and so the uh, really the major benefit to them and I think the reason why they like the the bell silage um, is because they can store the bells uh, the bells uh, are well protected with the wrapping and everything that they have uh, on them so they can store the bells outside uh, they don't have to occupy uh, precious uh, barn uh, storage space and uh, that sort of thing and so but I don't know I uh, Mr. Thornton is certainly open to um, ideas and again I think I just need to go up and speak to uh, the good people up at the store and I said I was going to do an edit but I've just been talking and and rambling here so we might as well just go ahead and do this last greenhouse here on camera and get it over and done with uh, as I often say and then we'll go down and and check out our water uh, hydrant there it is right over there you see it it's all painted red and everything and uh, basically what they were able to do was uh, the county uh, has water that comes through very nearby and so instead of drilling a well which is originally what mr. Thornton thought that they would end up having to do and he was certainly uh, he was certainly okay with the cost of having having a, um, a you know a rig brought up here to uh, to bore a uh, bore a hole and hit water and and put a pump and everything in. He was he was okay with that cost and everything. Um, but then we found out that the county water main runs through here, and so basically what he did was he just contacted the county and we did have to pay. Um, uh, a fee, uh, cost and everything to have that uh, that line put in and of course it's on the meter and um, we pay for the water that comes out of that. But we'll go park our wheel loader back in the shop here. I'll have um, just park it up in here like that, set the parking brake, shut the engine off and uh, we're gonna go ahead and take our uh, we'll take this uh, this Deutz far here up and grab the water tanker. Now I've been using this tractor a lot. Um, I really like it. Again, as I've said before, it's kind of a flashback to the farm sim 15 days uh, when this was uh, one of the primary tractors that we had access to and uh, quite uh, quite enjoyed using it. Hopefully, it will pull this uh, water tanker just fine. It's full, so uh, we won't have to take. Uh, we won't have to fill it up initially, but we will fill it up when we bring it back. And I really think that that most likely, uh, unless this dirt path here just really gets um, uh, in worse shape with the rains that are supposed to come later today uh, and tomorrow, uh, it might be more convenient to bring. Uh, to come up here to get our water for our farm use. This water is, um, um, oops, my bad. I should have uh, stopped there and filled that water up. Um, this water is certainly um, uh, fine for both uh, agriculture as well as animal use. 
so we don't have to worry about uh, about that. It's basically the same water that we have down at the uh, the main farm area, so uh, it's just coming off the same line. And uh, like I said, the county uh, the county put that in for us and did a fine job, and it's really going to help us out tremendously because hauling water. Uh, from the greenhouse areas all the way down to the or hauling it from the main farm up to this area was kind of a slow time consuming process and uh, having to go all the way back down there plus um, Thomas and, and Smithy are well they do a really good job driving and um, in backing and everything but they are sometimes fence post challenged and so um, so yeah, so they can, they've been known to, to wipe out a fence post and wipe out a, uh, wipe out the tanker or wipe out just about anything else that might be standing nearby. Of course, I'm about as bad. Uh, you know, I, I don't do well backing and talking up at the same time. All right, well, there we go. We've got all of our greenhouses topped up with both manure and water. And we'll go ahead and go over here and and test out this water hydrant because uh, it's a little hard to see there. They uh, could have put something in a little bit larger. But we'll go ahead and fill up our water. This is the first amount of water that we've taken out of here. And we'll go ahead and fill this guy up and I'll be right back with you. All right, full water tanker. We'll carry this back down to the main farm area and drop it off and then we'll go to our other task that we need to complete today and I think what we're going to do is with the rain coming if our soil and everything is quite damp and so what we're going to do is we're going to sp uh, spread uh, granular fertilizer on the grass field that we basically mowed uh, yesterday we're going to go ahead and just do that and we'll disconnect from our water tanker and go ahead and park our tractor now we'll need to do uh, we'll need to take care of our animals today um, but we'll do that uh, later on, and possibly the next episode, and uh, that will be just fine there. All right, go ahead and park up our Deutzfar, get out, and I think we're going to take the JCB down. Uh, I had Thomas go ahead and fill up with fertilizer. And again, kind of looking at the soil conditions and everything, we did have some rain that came through last night. And um, we could go ahead and spray, or we could also apply a liquid slurry if we wanted to. But um, I think what we're going to go ahead and do, because the, 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 the new legislation doesn't go into effect until 2018, and we do have quite a bit of fertilizer that we have bulk bought um, last year and early this year. And so we do need to go ahead and use it. Uh, either use it or lose it as they say and we certainly don't want to lose it so we're gonna go ahead and um, and just spread granular fertilizer down here and again kinda thinking about the old soil mod from farm sim 15 that you know if our um, if our soil uh, conditions our soil uh, moisture levels and everything were such that um, it was a bit wet then obviously we would have to do it this way anyway because we wouldn't want to put any additional moisture on the field if we didn't have to and of course our sheep are still well managed so they're not going to bother uh, buggering off so we're just going to go ahead and leave that gate open and then we'll come down here and get this gate here open like into that And again, we're just going to leave these. Um, we're just going to leave the the bells down here in this field. Why not? Because um, you know, quite honestly, they're not going to go anywhere, and um, they can ferment down here just as easily as they can ferment up at our main farm. And of course, I don't want to tie up farm space by having uh, bells sitting around fermenting that we're not necessarily going to use. They don't need to go under cover because they are wrapped. So, uh, you know, we do store hay and straw that we sell uh, to neighboring farms. We do store that at the main farm in the large barn uh, that I don't even think I've showed you yet. Uh, and we're getting pretty close to being sold out there. 
in that uh, in that barn. We've we've had a obviously a stockpile from uh, from last year uh, in there and. Um, have been selling quite a bit of that and of course we deliver it to the local farms uh, as well just part of the service that Mr. Thornton has always tried to give back to the community the way he feels is that you know the community has been good to him he came here uh, well he's from this these parts but he started up the farm it was his uh, part it was a family farm and everything for him but you know the the community has been very good to him and so he's tried to essentially always give back and that's just part of his efforts because it's a lot of struggling farmers around here that are really struggling to try to make ends meet and what ends up happening is when these guys uh, start to uh, start to struggle well essentially um, they have to you know they have to start making some cuts and typically what happens first is you know they're forced to maybe sell some equipment uh, they get to a point to where that what they've had to sell their assets and everything um, what they have left over is not really enough to 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 work the land the fields that they have and then the next thing that usually happens is they the, those big corporate farms that I've been talking about before uh, start stepping in and and offering them extremely lucrative money. I mean, the, the, these corporate farms pay quite well for land, but what they do is they come in and they essentially plant their, you know, their farms, their fields, and whatever they're going to do, and they, they bring in workers. The workers don't come from the local areas. They're not bothering uh, to hire any of the guys that are out looking from work, for work here in the Cotswolds. They end up bringing these guys in from, from other areas, um, and essentially farming the fields uh, the crops don't even stay in the area and that's what's so sad is that basically all they're really doing is they're using the land because obviously land is a uh, is at a premium you know, here in the UK especially good farmland good fertile farmland and this area has some of the best fertile farmland in the entire uh, United Kingdom and and these corporate farms they know this they they know this and they come in and they just basically um, um, buy buy this land up buy the fields up um, and they sometimes don't even offer a good uh, a good return for these uh, for these guys and of course a lot of them are also just trying to just trying to get their head above water maybe maybe they've got some bank loans maybe they've had you know occasionally the crops are um, not the best in the world uh, here either weather or other factors uh, affect the quality of of the crops and the conditions and everything and so maybe some of these farmers have had a situation where um, they've they've just had some some bad bad times and they've got a little bit of debt and then next thing you know somebody comes in and and waves a, a pile of cash at them well they sell up lock stock and barrel and so that's really what mr thornton is trying to prevent from happening and i'm i'm 100 percent on board with that because uh, i i know myself the importance of of buying local you know shopping at home keeping your money uh, keeping your money all nearby if you can if you can basically hire local, if you can buy local, if you can keep your money and your community's money all basically within your little area, within your area of control, then you're going to be so much better off um, than sending your money and sending jobs and everything so far away. Because if, if you don't have any jobs in the local area, then the first thing that starts to happen is as the young people start to come out of school, there's nothing for these young people to do in these areas. Um, so they're forced to, to leave. They're forced to go to um, go to other areas, go to London, go to, you know, Manchester, go to uh, other other places like that. And um, it's just it's just really a sad thing. We're seeing so many of our of our talents and everything that uh, used to be so prominent in not only this area, but other areas um, of the world and this is a this is a problem that uh, happens not only it's not just related to the UK it's not just related to England it's not just related to the Cotswolds it really is a sort of a global epidemic in the sense that if you don't have anything for the young people to do when they get out of school um, then 
your communities are going to die off, and that is so, so sad. One of the things also that I've been talking to Mr. Thornton about is whether or not we can uh, sort of maybe take on some seasonal help, um, bring in some, some new people. And, and, you know, he told me the other day, he says, well, Jerry, that's a great idea. And actually it was something that came up uh, when he was speaking with Country File, and I keep bringing this up, but this is kind of a, a storyline that I saw in Country File just a few weeks ago, uh, young people and everything. And so Mr. Thornton uh, is, um, is talking to Country File, and there's a good opportunity, a very good chance um, as the RAF jet flies overhead, I think somewhere. Or no, it's the train. Well, train, jet, it kind of all sounds familiar here. Let me uh, let me grab a screenshot right quick here. All right. So yeah, RAF jet or um, um, train, if you're close enough to it, I suppose it sounds very similar. All right. Well, this little job is done. We'll put we'll put a little fertilizer right in this area here. And that's looking good. All right, so we're going to go ahead and go back to the main farm. I will shut the gate behind us because we're basically done with this field until the silage has fermented fully and we start getting some orders for silage and then we'll come in and pick that up and deliver it. I think it's pretty much all sold. Um, pretty much uh, we've got a few uh, local farms that we support that we provide or we sell hay, uh, straw, and silage to and uh, they pretty much order and, and all of that has already been calculated and so it's just a matter of uh, all of us, the guys, myself and, and Smithy and, and Thomas just to make sure that we get all of our work done uh, so that we can have a good crop of those items. Now, speaking of Smithy, he is out uh, doing some spraying. Uh, so we are spraying uh, pesticide uh, stuff uh, in addition to fertilizer um, out this week as well. So he is busy doing that. And so Thomas is um, uh, messing around with some of the animals and getting some of those uh, guys um, uh, vaccinated and just taking care of other needs around the farm. We do everything, anything and everything, whatever needs to be done, needs to be done. Now, one of the things that we're going to do is, um, you know, I told you, I think maybe in episode one or maybe it was sort of like in episode zero, that when I first came to the farm, uh, these are little apartments over here. And um, uh, they're not, you know, it's certainly not a five-star accommodation. There, you know, there are no uh, Michelin stars around this, uh, these parts, but... Um, they're nice apartments, so that's where we're going to put Billy Bob uh, up when he is here, uh, just because uh, Thomas's place is quite small, and um, and so we basically want to have a place for for Billy Bob, and so that's where he's going to stay. And it's nice. I mean, it's not uh, it's not a flea pit or anything like that. So, all right, we'll go ahead and jump out there. And I think I'm going to start wrapping this up. This is episode number eight and just getting, go ahead and get this uh, wrapped up and done. Uh, most likely we will come back and we'll be in the same game day. But again, folks, don't get too, uh, don't get too bogged down with game days and um, um, days of the week and all that kind of stuff. Because kind of the way we're, we're playing things is we want just to have the flexibility to kind of just use our imagination and do things that we need to do and the way that we want to do them and uh, just have fun in the process and enjoy as this storyline kind of unfolds. And, and of course, when Billy Bob gets here, he's going to be uh, uh, sharing his stories and his experience from uh, U.S. farming. And of course, um, I'm thinking that probably he'll go back and, and he'll probably have a lot of uh, cool things to explain to uh, the guys that he works with and his, his farm boss and everything. So it's going to be a good win-win situation. I'm really glad that uh, Thomas and, and his cousin Billy Bob are going to be able to uh, to uh, to meet up. It's been so many years since they've seen each other. And, and of course, Billy Bob uh, will also and Thomas will have some opportunities to go around and see some of the sites here and 
in uh, this portion of England and everything. I'm very excited for him because I know how impressed I was when I first came here with just my backpack and wandering around and didn't really know what I wanted to do, but I was happy to just basically be here and, and enjoying this. So anyway, folks, thank you all so, so very much. I have yet to start my vacation. I'm feeling better. I took, uh, took a couple of days, uh, or actually I took a day and a half off from work, which is very rare for me, but with my vacation coming up, I basically rearranged my work schedule and I figured, you know, I would be better off by staying in bed uh, for a day and a half. And that's what I did. And I feel much, much, much better. And so this is just another episode that I'm recording before I go on vacation. So that way, when I get back from vacation, if I have a lot of work and everything, and if my schedule is quite hectic, I don't have to worry about um, recording an episode if I really don't feel like it. And I know, I know you guys would understand if, if an episode didn't drop on a specific day. I know you guys will understand because I know that you all understand that real world comes before our virtual worlds and our hobbies and all that kind of stuff. But I still enjoy um, playing this game and I enjoy bringing these uh, episodes to you all to watch. And it's 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 um, it's a partnership, I suppose. I produce the videos, I play the games, you guys watch them, and we all have fun. So again, uh, please take good care of yourselves and each other. God bless you all. And I will see you back here on Thornton Farm for episode number nine or over on Snetterton Farm um, for episode, I don't know, uh, 18 or 19 or something like that. Again, take good care of yourselves. Talk to you all very soon. Bye-bye.